So, participants in continuation of our climate change vulnerability adaptation in natural resource management part 3 and in this uh, section we will be discussing the adaptation planning and implementation processes. In earlier uh, lectures we discussed about vulnerability assessment a various way that we can assess vulnerability and also you know different aspects along with example we have given various indicators we have discussed and also the examples of various indicators. In these sections we will look at the adaptation process once you know that a particular society community or individual is vulnerable to a certain stress that could be water stress that could be stress because of lack of you know uh, good quality soil for a farmer that would be a stress unavailability of good seeds quality seeds for an company owner it could be uh, unavailability of raw material problem with transportation these are all you know any kind of changes <coughs> and a particular community or individual when is vulnerable through our assessment we find then what you need to go there are two way one is adaptation the other is mitigation that we discussed. So, adaptation is is actually one of the most important or options that we can actually follow for addressing the vulnerability. Now, adaptation planning and implementation process if you look at it involves various kind of conditions and also different kind of factors are also involved into that. Now, in case of adaptation planning process step 1 on the first you know step is to characterize the development context in which actually the community or an individual is exposed to and then you try to identify the different information about the system existing system. Now, this adaptation framework that we are discussing today is proposed by UNFCCC United Nation you know framework for climate change. So, they is one of the apex bodies looking into climate change adaptation and other aspect. So, here this adaptation planning framework given by UNFCC it looks at monitoring assessment and revision of plan. So, this uh, particular you know cycle keeps on going, but what happens at the uh, practical condition is that you start with characterizing your the context of development. One that is you know studied then you go for characterizing the climate risks and the sources of various vulnerabilities and that we have discussed a lot in the previous lectures how we can assess vulnerability. Now, once you have done the assessment of risk and vulnerability then we all you know go on to assess climate change risks vulnerabilities for collection of various systems ok. Then we move on to see study evaluate the scenarios and pathways of development in case of climate change. So, one has to imagine that if there is a climate change then what kind of pathways and development activities should actually go on. So, one we have BAU situation we we call business as usual another is you know scenario that you anticipate anticipatory scenario ok for future. And this scenario in the case of climate change is largely based on you know CO2 uh, concentration increase of CO2 concentration. So, once your scenarios pathways of development in a changing climate is studied evaluated then we go for prioritizing our actions to build resilience and thus reducing the vulnerability. Then we go on to design of coherent implementation strategy and once we design the strategy next remains is implementation. So, you go implement and then start managing the system. So, this is a you know very very well known uh, framework for adaptation planning and 
implementation process, which ultimately leads to build resilience and reduce vulnerability. Now, I will discuss uh, a few cases um, that often happen and then create lot of stress as well as you know changes the availability or accessibility of various natural resources to the people. Flood and drought, two important event that uh, you know takes place and create havoc actually in many parts of the world. So, in India. No, so flood, uh, you know, it is a it is a natural phenomena and uh, especially the region where from I am speaking, you know, Assam is known for, you know, annual floods. So, almost it is almost, you know, sure that every year there will be flood, but the question is that how much the impact would vary from year to year and that depends on also on the good assessment, vulnerability assessment and then good or robust adaptation strategy or mitigation planning. Now, these all exercise are basically based on ground truth and also suitable policy framework. So, if you look at that uh, sometime in uh, some parts of our country, we face lot of issue with uh, you know flash flood. Now, right now in the Bangalore city, we are seeing, we are viewing that what is happening with uh, uh, half of the city is, is flooded, even some of the multinational companies, offices are flooded, unprecedented situations. So, you know this kind of situation when happens, this actually remind us that we need to have a well thought, well planned strategy in hand. Similarly, in case of drought. If we know that the hot spot of water stress conditions across the country and we have discussed that remote sensing GIS help us to do to identify the hot spot. If we know all those informations, if we know also the, the history of our climatic events across the country, then we need to actually prepare a robust plan a strategy for adaptation or mitigation. Now, you know several you know calculations, several modeling exercise has been carried out in this two particular type of event flood and drought. Now, as of today, we have enough of technology in hand to assess. So, the next step is that we are basically now here prioritizing our actions to build resilience. This is what now looks very, very important to act upon because otherwise we have now a relatively good number of technologies to carry out various kind of advanced assessment. So, if you look at that, uh, you know, in case of drought, we can actually evaluate drought through various way. You can actually develop some drought indices and those indices help you to understand the intensity of the drought. A simple method for drought detection, you know, which is calculated by dividing actual precipitation by normal precipitation and then you multiply by 100, that gives you a percentage, you know, amount of water coming into the system. Percent of rainfall in certain areas over a period of time also changes. Now, if we have those data with us, that certainly would help us to plan to have a very effective and robust adaptation strategy. Now, if you look at that there are certain, you know, way um, that you can actually evaluate the intensity of suppose drought event. One is your percent departure from the normal. So, suppose you have a drought condition, suppose uh, this is suppose your uh, normal kind of drought situation and if it goes little bit in the higher end, the percentage by percentage level, then we will actually understand the severity of the drought and this is called as PDN percentage, percentage departure from the normal. Now, if you look at this table, it gives uh, some value 
and also the severity of the drought. This is how one can actually identify the severity of the drought event. If it is greater than 0, no drought. If it is between 0 and minus 25, mild drought. If it is minus 26 and 50, moderate drought. And if it is less than minus 50, then it is severe drought. Okay? So, this severity of drought will help you to understand that in which location what kind of adaptation measure is required. We can also have another way to express the uh, severity of drought that is decile wave and this, this has been developed to use instead of PDN. So, decile you can use if you are suppose not comfortable with PDN, this method of decile also can help you. What you do is that monthly precipitation uh, that you get from any kind of meteorological station, you you know sum them from a you know long term record roughly around 30 years and that value actually is uh, used for uh, deciles evaluation. And deciles are calculated from the number of occurrences which are distributed from 1 to 10 in percent. And the lowest value indicates condition drier than the normal okay? and the higher value indicates condition wetter than normal. So, that means this is negative side means less water or moisture, this is positive side that means more water or moisture. Okay? So, if you move this side means it is drought very significantly the drought intensity of drought increases and here intensity of drought decreases. Now, 0 to 20 much below normal, 20 to 40 below normal, 40 to 60 near normal means somewhere here, 60 to 80 above normal and 80 to 100 percent is much above normal. Okay? So, the value suppose minus 80 that means it is very severe drought. All right. Then next uh, another you know index uh, method that we can use is uh, Palmer Drought Severity Index PDSI and this uh, index actually uses historical data of rainfall temperature and also you know available water content and then it computes the rainfall pattern which actually will tell you whether there is drought or not. Now, the soil moisture data that you collect or measure is calibrated to the homogeneous climate zone, jaha climate is not changing too frequently. You also sometimes imagine that okay, within this grid my climate is same. So, PDSI also actually used as an indices for agricultural drought because you know there is also some thing is there that when agriculture department looks at drought, they actually always relate it with productions, productivity, yield. So, their way of calling a drought a drought depends on that how much it has affected the crop productions and yield and associated aspects. So, unless until agriculture department find it that yes, it is agricultural drought till then no kind of uh, what you call assistance or some things which are available under some schemes may not be facilitated to the people. Now, PDSI is commonly used in USA and uh, this is not much uh, popular in India. So, in case of PDSI again you know minus negative value, negative value if it is low you have low drought, low intensity drought if negative value is high, then you have you know extreme doubt. So, this is largely on the basis of water content. Okay? The next is standardized precipitation index SPI. Now, this index calculated from long term record of precipitation for each location. Suppose you want to calculate SPI for your campus, any college campus. So, in that case you need at least 30, 30, 40 years of rainfall data and this SPI it provides you an early warning of drought, it gives some idea about its severity. Okay? Now, the data that you get it is fitted 
to a gamma distribution and then you normalize it to a flexible multiple time scale to calculate SPI I am talking about. It is a dimensionless index whose lower value means negative value actually will indicate you know drought and positive value will indicate wet condition like previous ones. And SPI also normally uh, distributed therefore, it can be used uh, to describe wet as well as dry period. If you look at that uh, standardized precipitation is the difference of precipitation from the mean divided by the standard deviation for a specific time period. That is how you get actually your standardized precipitation SP. Now, look at uh, the SPI. So, greater than 2 extremely wet, less than minus 2 extremely dry and then in between you have various category of drought. Next standardized precipitation evapotranspiration index SPEI. You know why I, I am just actually introducing this different methodology to you because within natural resource management if any one of you has a background of suppose agricultural physics or hydrology. Uh, this kind of subject then probably probably you may like to focus on this aspect ok. So, I am just that is why introducing this is an another aspect which is linked with natural resource management especially with water. So, SPEI is nothing but an extension of standard precipitation index and this is designed to take into account both precipitation and potential evapotranspiration to determine the drought. If you look at that uh, you know unlike SPI this index captures the main impact of increased temperatures on water demand ok. And then it is sensitive to the method that to calculate PET. So, if you want to calculate uh, PET for further you know understanding of the intensity of moisture stress in soil then SPEI is one index which can help you. And this index is statistically based index which actually requires or need only climatological information without any assumption about the characteristics of the underlying system in a particular area ok. So, it just requires the climatological information does not need the underlying conditions. Next surface water supply index SWSI. Now, this index used for frequency analysis to normalize long term data and it is very useful this index for indicating snow pack conditions in mountain in mountainous region. In mountainous regions it also helps to measure the potential water supply. See majority of the river uh, important river in India the water river water is fed up from coming from glaciers. So, surface water supply index is one index which can actually help you to understand that how much water actually can come in into the stream flow. So, in case of SWSI once again lower the value drier is the condition. So, minus 4.2 to 3 extremely dry and 3.1 to 4.2 is extremely wet and then in between you have various other intensities of drought condition. Then comes reclamation drought index RDI ok. RDI uses temperature, precipitation, snow pack, stream flow and also reservoir level information data ok. So, this is more or less uh, like SWSI and this is used as an indicator to evaluate the drought liquidation plan how to manage drought and also to release drought emergency fund. When government announced that a particular district is drought affected then only actually some of the funds from various schemes will go to that particular state. And that is why probably you might have seen 
uh, that sometime the chief ministers and the state government actually pushes central government to announce the announce that uh, uh, their uh, state is drought affected because if center allow announce it that it is a drought affected district then that district of that particular state will become eligible to get certain amount of grant so that is the also one you know policy aspect which is related with this all these uh, indices so here also in case of rdi lower the value drier is the condition higher the value it is a wet or moist condition so then we have another index also sometime it is used in some countries standardized water level index swi and this index is based on water level probability at any time scale you calculate through this particular formula where wj stands for seasonal water level for the j 8th observation okay for the j 8th observation wm seasonal mean and your uh, sigma is the standard deviation so you then calculate swi 3 which is known as standardized runoff index now sri or sri incorporates various hydrologic processes which determine the seasonal lags or gaps in the influence of climate on stream flow okay so what actually is sri gives you that it actually determine help it uh, in understanding the amount of moist condition in a particular area and sri also is calculated on the basis of your rainfall and also you know runoff data so in case of sri same thing uh, when you have uh, you know high negative value index value you have extreme drought condition when you have high index value you have extreme wet condition so this particular uh, phenomena is same across all the indices aridity index very important you know many parts of our country are actually arid in uh, as far as uh, the classification of land is concerned so but the intensity of aridity can be actually um, you know understood by aridity index it is a ratio of annual precipitation and annual potential evapotranspiration and you express aridity in percentage okay and uh, this is again very simple water balance equation similar to almost uh, swsi which we discussed few minutes back it doesn't properly account uh, for the rainfall runoff and uh, here crop water requirements are not considered so if you look at the formula which is famously known as thorntwaite formula for aridity index here you use pet potential water transpiration data precipitation data and then you calculate ai in this case aridity in case because we are we are going to call it highly arid and low arid so here if the value is higher greater than 50 then you have severe drought means high you know arid conditions okay and if you have the value less than equal to 25% you have mild drought in between you have moderate drought so this is perhaps the only index uh, that we have positive uh, value higher value means severe drought because we are calculating actually the aridity or dryness index next is cop moisture index or cmi here cmi it is actually used to monitor your crop condition okay and uh, you know this kind of indices when you carry out remote sensing in remote sensing lecture we discussed so after those data that you get spectral images and you analyze it then you can actually compare with this kind of ground based information okay so this cmi actually helps you monitoring crop condition it is also uh, helpful for understanding that how much moisture how much water is already there in the plant system this can also be presented as the you know monthly moisture anomaly or we call it z index as a product of pdsi calculation which we just discussed couple of minutes back 
So, there is a limitation of using CMI and uh, that it can be used only in the growing season and cannot determine the long term period of drought. Okay. Next is moisture adequacy index MAI. This is calculated during different crop phenological crop phenological stages by using water balance every week. So, water balance calculation considers soil property, crop growth and water requirement of various major crops. Drought is again specified crop wise on a real time basis because what is drought for you know rice it cannot be drought for wheat different crop requires different kind of uh, water intake. Well, MAI is uh, data intensive therefore, it is uh, you know difficult to implement under condition where you know that you do not have much data or information uh, primary or secondary. Crop water stress index CWSI, this is again another very important index. You know soil plant air water or SPAC system that we if you recall in one of the earlier uh, lectures we discussed about SPAC system. This is a model which is used for simulation of soil water and computation of effective rainfall for plant transpiration. Now, CWSI is a daily integration of plant available soil water evaporative demand and plant phenological stage susceptibility to water. So, SPAW or SPAC model needs calibration for each crop and region and that is why this index has limited use. You can actually estimate CWSI through this uh, simple formula equations here all you know only these things WSUS it means seasonally dependent weighting factor for grain yield susceptibility. If you recall that one of the earlier classes I mentioned that how much important it is the water for plant growth and also productivity and yield. While discussing remote sensing aspect we also discuss that how plant water stress also can be you know uh, captured sometimes through remote sensing. Here this kind of indices actually can reinstate the fact which probably will get through remote sensing without going into the field without actually studying the plant water stress in the field. So, these are you know indices which uh, uh, helps uh, us to understand the drought condition. Now, as I was telling about remote sensing here is remote sensing based indicator. Now, these are the remote sensing based indicator. Uh, which we have discussed in earlier remote sensing classes, NDVI most popular, enhanced vegetation index, then vegetation condition index, transform vegetation index, temperature condition index, various you know these indices, indices are used for you know estimating the agricultural drought situation. Why we I am discussing this particular aspect? Because it is very very important your all grant financial help in case of drought situation will only come out when it will be announced as a agricultural drought. And to understand that there is a process this kind of you know evaluation will be carried out and for that evaluation you need to know some of these important indices. Mm -hmm.